Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya al mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'een. Uh, welcome brothers and sisters to this session, Dawah, the prophetic mission. Inshallah we have a number of speakers in this session and the session will conclude with a Q&A session. So inshallah the next presentation will be by uh, Imam ja um, uh, Jawad Ahmed. Uh, with Y Islam for 15 to 20 years. Uh, he has been leading the Dawa hotline in particular um, for 15 plus years uh, and has an extensive experience leading many activities in the Y Islam project. So Imam Jawad inshallah will be talking about Dawa experiences. Jazakallah khair brother Shark. A'udhu billahi shaitan wa rahim. Bismillah rahman rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa salatu salam wa salam my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us to be a Muslim. Understand this big, big gift of Allah, big mercy, rahmah from Allah. Uh, before we even uh, think about da'wah and calling others to Islam, first thing that we have to understand uh, uh, foremost is the uh, biggest gift Allah has given us to be in Islam, whether you were born into Islam, whether you converted into Islam, whether you were invited by somebody uh, into Islam, understand that Allah SWT has showered his countless blessings and mercy to be on this path. And that is why when somebody tastes, when somebody tastes uh, uh, the, the, what you call uh, the fruit, the benefit, then you want other people to share that with you. You don't want to be uh, selfish and alone, uh, you know, and thinking that this is just for me. Imagine you ate a nice fruit like an apple, an orange, or a mango, or anything, grapefruit, and it was very, very tasty. It was very delicious. I mean, you were just going, mmm, yes. Would you want to be selfish and just keep it to yourself, or you want to share with your family, your friends, you want to call up people and say, hey, why don't you go get fruit from that area that I got? And I and I and I am tasting it. It's it's delicious. This is what Dawa is about. Dawa is about living your life with Islam, living your whole personality, your character, your lifestyle, your behavior, everything. Dawa is all about interactions, talking to people, interacting with people, uh, transactions with people, muamalat. You know. One aspect of Dawah is what the previous speakers may have spoken today is, you know, giving people Quran, giving them brochures, giving them information. That is one thing. But what is important to understand um, that what most important thing of Dawah is how you conduct yourself. Allah SWT in Surah Yusuf and Surah 12 in verse 108 tells us in a beautiful ayah, Say, this is my path, I call upon to who? To Allah. Because when you are on this path, when you are on this path of hidayah, path of guidance, this is my path. And Allah is ordering Muhammad to say this to others. Oh Muhammad say that. Say what? This is my path, the path of guidance and righteousness which is leading us to Allah this path of guidance leads us to Allah SWT. and that is what we want everybody wants Allah and the pleasure of Allah everybody wants sukoon satisfaction and that is why Allah SWT is saying Qul sabili adu ala upon foresightedness or highness or wisdom Hindsight, you know, Basira is having deep knowledge and understanding. I was watching or reading some of the uh, 
uh, comments that are being posted here, many questions, like I know someone from India, Docs Majors, con continuously asking since morning about the cartoon. You know, whether something is halal or haram, think about it this way, that whatever you're doing, you know, is it promoting da'wah? Within, even within restrictions, I know there are many ulama, they say don't, you know, don't uh, make pictures, don't make faces, but there are many cartoonists out there and there are many animation artist people who use their talent and skill to call people to Islam. You may have watched some of these um, animations right here in the videos that were played earlier on uh, by both the organizations Gain Peace and Why Islam in terms of inviting people others. This ayah of Surah your use of Surah 12 verse 108 is very, very profound. Memorize it, understand it, and live by it. Rasul <laughs> is saying to the people at that time in Mecca that this is my path, which I call upon you to Allah, and therefore, uh, on the on the with the knowledge and depth of knowledge and hindsight and wisdom ala basira you know farsightedness knowing wisdom is 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 knowing understanding who you are dealing with and who are you approaching with ala basira ana wa man ittaba'ni rasulullah saying i do this and those who follow me so if you are a follower of muhammad sallam ask yourself this question what can you do to promote the work of Muhammad Sallam, the Sunnah and Seer of that. And for that, I just want to share a couple of stories, you know, uh, uh, from the hotline and from the field hour. Uh, we have experienced many, many amazing stories. There was one, one couple in a very small town in upper northern uh, California area, somewhere around Eureka, and they called the hotline once and they were a young couple in their mid thirties and they were asking questions about Islam one after another, after another conversation went longer and longer, almost two hours. And Alhamdulillah at the end, after all their questions and confusions and misconceptions were removed and clarified, they took the Shahada. Both husband and wife together took Shahada. And you know, even the, uh, I remember telling them, you know, you can take your time, take some chance, you know, read more. I said, no, we're convinced we want to do it and do it now. It reminded me um, of the magicians in the house of Pharaoh, that when they saw the miracle, the Moza from Musa al-Islam with his staff that came down, they immediately, you know, went in sujood to Allah, not to Musa or Firaun. They went in sajda to Allah and they said, we believe in the Lord of Moses and Aaron. And Mo and uh, Pharaoh was saying, you know, that I'll cut your hands and I'll cut your body and I'll hang you from the tree. And they say, you know, do whatever you want to do. We are convinced. We've seen the miracle of God, miracle of Allah. You know, that we are magicians. We do this. This is our bread and butter. We, our life is based on magic and all that. But what Musa al-Islam is doing is not magic. It's not sorcery. This is real thing, the real deal, the miracle. So once you are convinced, then nothing can stop you. There was another um, a person, we have many projects, as you know, you can see them online and it was discussed. Please do donate online on ikna.org slash donate. And you can make your own campaign. You know, you can uh, band together with your friends and families and your community members. Go to ikna.org slash baraka, B-A-R-A-K-H, and make your own campaign, whether it's a billboard campaign, whether it's a postcard, zip code campaign, you know, we send postcards. So we sent postcards to about you know, um, almost 10,000 uh, zip uh, households within a zip code area in South Dakota, which is a, a very northwestern part of America, you know, South Dakota, way up there. Somewhere around Sturgis, uh, South Dakota, one of the um, out outskirts city, small town, maybe because the town that the person was calling from, from the hotline, I quickly did a Google search on maps and found that he is calling from a town that has a population of only 5,000 people. Can you imagine that, uh, brothers and sisters? 5,000 people from a town, and he received uh, the postcard, and the postcard said, you know, get a free Quran, ask a question. So he called, and he said, you know, he was very upset, very angry, you know, shouting, screaming, yelling, cursing, cursing Islam, cursing Allah, cursing Muhammad, 
and very, very agitated that why do you send me this postcard? You know, he said that, you know, I opened my mailbox this morning and I see you guys threatening me. And, you know, I, I said, you know, we're not threatening anybody. We just sent a postcard, and how, you know, and, uh, you know, we're inviting you to learn about a faith, you know, educate yourself. A lot of people who have hatred against Islam have animosity. It is just because of ignorance. And he was very, very upset. You know, at least it took the first five, ten minutes for me to just calm him down to make him realize that, look, we haven't done any criminality by sending you a postcard. And, you know, he was saying that uh, don't send me a Quran. You send me a Quran, I'm going to flush it in the toilet or things like that. But you know what? After an ensuing conversation dialogue of about 30, 35 minutes, he was convinced. You know, he said, you know what? After all that you have spoken to me on the phone, sir, I'm going to give it a shot. Send me a Quran. Let me read it. And I said, you know, please make sure that you respect it because he had earlier said <clears throat> that he will put it in the toilet and all that. And he assured, he said, yes, I will respect it and I'll read it. And if I don't want it, I'll go and give it to my local library. Why am I sharing all these stories with you? To show you that this is America. There is a hard America and there is soft America. It is us who are aloof from the society. We as American Muslims are isolated and we are introvert in our own within domain. You know, it's amazing that we are, we have an opportunity in this beautiful country that we call home. And let me tell you one thing, everyone who hates America does not deserve to live here. They should pack their bags and get out of here. You know, like like everybody says, go back to where you came from. I, as an imam, I tell you as a Muslim, if you hate America, you don't belong here. You know, there are people, I've been, I've been watching some of the uh, posts over here. There's this person, MEF, whatever, you know, Salafis or whatever they want to call themselves, who have this diehard extremist attitude. There is no place for extremism in Islam. And Islam is a very balanced and moderate religion and a way of life. Islam is all about beauty and compassion and love and mercy. Islam is about sharing with others. It just imagine uh, the 13 years that Rasul Sam lived in Mecca and then the, when he went to Taif and supported over there, um, you know, talking to people. These were the stories. And that is why one time I was giving a khutbah in a small masjid in somewhere in Massachusetts, outskirts of the Boston area. And I was talking exactly about this uh, obligation of us and our duty as Muslims to conduct ourselves with the best manners and best etiquette. That is living dawah. Practical dawah is all about how you interact with your um, neighbors and how you interact with your fellow Americans uh, or your colleagues at work or your friends at school or college. It's the practicality that people see. And I was talking about this practical dawah, meaning living the dawah, instead of just doing the talk, the talk, but walk the talk. And you'd be amazed after that 20 minutes khutbah and after the prayers, after the salah, Jumma prayers, a young man, a white Caucasian in his early 20s, just walked up to me and he was just crying. So, you know, he said, can I talk to you, ma'am? I got scared. I got worried. That's like maybe I said something in the khutbah that hurt his feeling. I mean, I because... I see a white American with just tears coming down and says, can I talk to you? And I said, okay, let's go out on the side, on the corner somewhere, and we'll talk. And I was feeling like kind of guilty that maybe I had said something that has uh, hurt his feelings. So I was ready. I started, I said, I apologize if I hurt your feelings or anything. He said, no, 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 you don't need to apologize. No, 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 hold on. He tried to compose himself and he said, you know, Imam, the 20 minutes khutbah that you gave, every single thing that you're saying about living Islam, living your, uh, living the dawah, you know, living your experience. It's so what is experience? It's living and facing the society, interacting. You can't be living in a nutshell, cut off, uh, aloof from other people. You have to be in the thick and thin of things. So he said that uh, what his story was, uh, that he had a Muslim friend from uh, elementary school from kindergarten that he grew up with in his locality in his neighbor and he said you know i forget his name but he said that you know this person is my muslim friend in school and we went to school together we went to middle school together and ironically we went to the same high school and luckily coincidentally we went to the same college and you know he said that i'm in 
time in college and you know we're going together and he said he talked about his muslim friend he said everything imam everything you said in the khutbah is exactly what i see in my muslim friend and he said that my i had asked my muslim friend that you know i want to learn more about islam is it okay if i come to a juma you know a, a prayer and my muslim friend said yeah there is this masjid over there go there and pray you can just be there and sit there and listen you don't have to pray or anything you are a visitor you're a guest you know you're from a different faith that's fine if you want to do the rituals of prayer standing and folding you can do that so his muslim friend had invited that friday to the masjid and he himself was not there because he was working the muslim friend was working somewhere else so he went to juma at another masjid so this person he said, the reason I'm crying is that I think now is the time and, and, and for 22 years, I know this Muslim friend of mine and I want to give him the best gift of life. I said, sure. Is there anything I can help you with? He said, yes, I want to give my Muslim friend the best gift of life by taking the Shahada. Can you give me the Shahada? This is just a remote, small, you know, town masjid. I mean, I live in New Jersey. I was traveling, so I, I was, I was coincidentally, I was at that masjid, and coincidentally, at that masjid, I was giving khutbah about practical dawah, living your dawah, you know, being in the field. And this person who had a friend for 22 years as Muslim, and his Muslim friend asked him to come to this masjid. He little did he know, or anybody knew, that I would be coming from, you know, so many hundreds of miles away. And see, when Allah chooses somebody. He facilitates for them everything. This person who was a non-Muslim and 22 years was a friend of a Muslim and watching and observing him. And I asked him, you know, why are you so impressed with your Muslim friend? You know, you talk about, he said, it's about 22 years. He did everything that you said in the khutbah that a Muslim should do. He said, when I would get sick, he would even take me to the doctor, to the hospital. If I need a ride somewhere, he'll be over there. If I needed money, he'll be there. If I needed help for that, if my parents need anything, then he and his parents, because they're neighbors in the same area, they would do. He said, everything you said that a Muslim practically through their behavior and conduct is supposed to live his lamp, he has been doing that. And I have been just contemplating and thinking, and I feel like now is the time, and I want to give him the gift. I want to let him know that today I accepted Islam. So we give him the shahada, and then he called his friend, and he was crying on the phone, and he said, you know, this is my gift to you also, and so for uh, being such a nice neighbor and uh, being such a nice friend, a childhood friend, all the way through college. So brothers and sisters, these experiences, these things that we do right now, uh, is what we really need to live. You know, all of you who are watching right now, think about it. Are you a practical, living, mobile uh, Quran uh, in your interactions, in your communications, in your behavior, in your personality? You know, people are observing us all the time, 24-7, uh, wherever we go, wherever we are. So our conduct would all automatically invite and attract them to learn more about the faith. And if they learn about the faith and they want to live it, then they also join it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us all to the guidance of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide all of us to be such living examples of this beautiful message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah khair, uh, Imam Jawad. So in that, with that, we are out of time for this session. Um, one thing I would like to end with is simply to say that many people are asking the question, well, how do we do dawah during COVID-19? Uh, with lockdown, we socially distance, what do we do? On some of the work Ikna is doing to mail out postcards to some of the remote areas in the country, try and get the message of Islam, uh, the invitation to Islam to people, and to complement those uh, mailing efforts with social media campaigns targeted to the same regions, inshallah. So I'd like to end by thanking all of the speakers for the fantastic presentations and the words of inspiration, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to act on these words. Please do donate something for the work of Dawah. Please do volunteer for getting involved in some of the Dawah initiatives that are available to you.